is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football This is a new day to live your life This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football It's life in football We are life in football You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast. Check out the new website, lifeinfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeinfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Life in Football podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this your co-host, Colin Moore. You know we love and life and enjoy football. Top-notch coaches all around the world. Top, top-notch coaches all around the world. Today we got Coach Eric Mealy on, and he's the top-notch running back coach for Mississippi State. Them Bulldogs. Man, this is a coach who done did his thing as a player, too. Now, and y'all know that's something I love. Now, Coach Mealy, he was a strong safety and outside linebacker. Y'all know I love that defense, even though he's a running back coach right now. Uh, he played at William Patterson. And then he went on to do a little coaching in high school as a coordinator and, well, co-defense coordinator and special team coach and DB coach at Marston High School. And then he did a little coaching at Wingate. He did receiving, uh, uh, he was a receiving coach and a passing game coordinator. And then he went to Washington State and he was there for a good while, y'all. Nine years, he put in some good work. And y'all know how that offense was there at one time, or explosive, and they were tearing up the scene. And now they're doing the same thing at Mississippi State. But the great thing about it, Eric is a coach that you can trust. He's a guy that I love, everything that I read up on him. And then when he put into his running back, he makes sure these guys are top of the line. And he put his all into it, I can tell it. Because at one point, for the Pac-12, his running back unit was the featured running back unit of the Pac-12. They was doing pretty much, that was the unit for us. Out of all the teams in the Pac-12, everybody was like, hey, them boys up there at Washington State doing their thing. And Coach Eric, I'm so happy to have him on. And we got to get more into this story. But before I go any further, see Mo, bring him on. Hey man, appreciate you having me. Thanks, thanks for the intro, man. That's a. Uh, I, I gotta give it up to the uh, to the players, man. The kids, they they put all the work in, man. I'm just I'm just proud of uh, of what they've done. I graduated college, you know. You always play balls as a kid, you know. So I played football my whole life growing up, and uh, you know played played small school football there, and you know I got out and thought that that was gonna be the end of the run, and and uh, got you know got into a sales job and and made some money that first year, but you know a little little hole in my heart, you know something was missing and. You know, had lunch with my old head coach one day, and he said, uh, "Hey, you, you might as well come around here once in a while and help out if you got, you know, if you got time on your hands." And next thing you know, you know, one day it turned into two days, and before you know it, you know, I got my first coaching job and uh, got that first check for that season for for one thousand dollars, man. So I'm I'm, I'm kind of like that walk on coach, I kind of work my way up, but uh, you know, all worth it. And uh, I'm glad I made that decision years ago. Now, coach, with you deciding to yeah the, the the journey the journey to this point man very very rewarding um you know it's it's about the stories and those relationships you develop with the players and then obviously all the uh the performance stuff and all the stuff those guys are doing on the field is is uh that you know really that's that's just gravy but you know as you as you go along and you meet guys from different places and you hear their stories and and you're able to you know to help impact you know guys lives and uh you know i, I have four daughters at home so i got all my all my boys are at work, you know, so I, I come in and I, I kind of treat them like they're my sons and uh, make sure that, you know, by the time they leave, you know, when I'm done coaching them, um, you know, not just a better football player. That's that's that part's kind of a, assumed and that's a standard. But um, I want to make sure that they're they're better men, they're better husbands, they're better, uh, they're better friends, they're better um, with their with their own families and, uh, you know, have a great, successful life, whatever that may be. Yeah. Now, see, that's what I'm talking about. A coach who set an example for the guys. And that's what we need more of. And a shout out to your daughters too, man. Samantha, Jordan, Taylor, Madison. And also a shout out to your wife, Melissa, as well. Because you are setting a great example 
not only for the players, but for your kids as well. And could you get into who was a great example for you growing up? Yeah, you know, I had I had some great coaches too. And, and even before I, I mentioned some of them, but you know, M- Melissa was the one that you know had some uh, some vision and, and kind of my support system to help me kind of um, you know make some moves across the country. You know, we left we left Wingate, North Carolina, and went to uh, went to Washington State out there in Pullman, Washington, across the country. I mean, she was the one that you know got to get the house sold and sold one of our cars and all of our furniture. So we're trying to make it work, you know, and, and uh, you know sometimes you're eating. You're eating that government cheese, man. Just trying to make it happen, but she, she was there for us the whole way, and, and she's she's the real MVP. But some of the guys that you know, when I as I kind of came up as a player and and a, and a, and a coach, you know, just um, Dave Kurt, my high school coach, who recently passed away. He was a guy that uh, that always pushed me, you know. And at the time, you know, when you're younger and you think you got it all figured out, um, you know, you, you don't really have it all figured out. You know, later on, you realize that you know he was really pushing me, you know, to get the best out of me and wanted me to do uh, as well as I could. So um, couldn't thank him enough. Uh, coach Mack, my strength coach, same thing. I used to eat lunch in the weight room with a bunch of guys on my team. We used to work out together and then chop it up afterwards and, and, and break bread. And um, he was a big part of that and helped kind of uh, instill that work ethic. And then, you know, you get to college and, and you have your coaches in college and then you get to your first coaching jobs and uh, you know, Joe Wright, uh, Joe Reich at Wingate, you know, his brother is Frank Reich, head coach of the Colts. So obviously the family's got great coaching pedigree, but he's uh, he's been there for 20 seasons, wins a bunch of championships and uh, just a great man. You know, and he, and he he told me a lot about the coaching you know, profession and, and what it takes to be successful there, you know, on and off the field. So and obviously now I'm with, you know, I'm with, you know, Coach Mike Leach. And now I'm with the um, I'm with the mad scientist who. Uh, you know, he's taught me, uh, you know, master's degree in education in uh, the X's and O's of the game and uh, has a great, a great balance in life, too. You know, we want to make sure that I can uh, I can drop the girls off at school and I can run back. if I need to see, you know, go to do a, you know, an assembly or see them play in one of their sporting events. So it's been uh, I've been fortunate to have a lot of good, good role models in my life. Coach, now making it to the SEC and being able to be a coach and, you know, Pretty much at the highest level, I know some people would say the NFL is the highest level, but I just say any top-notch college program is the is the highest level as well. So, how is that for you coming up through the ranks? Because you put your time in and you earn your position that you are in right now. How does it feel to look out and see the kids that you are coaching right now that you was in their shoes and being able to live out your dream right now? How is that for you? Now it's, it's, it's big time, man. You know, you, you can definitely, uh, you know, from the minute I stepped on campus, you know, Mississippi state, you know, it's, uh, the SEC and, you know, their whole thing about it just means more. It does. I mean, everything's bigger and the facilities and, and the players, even for that matter, I mean, you're getting, you're getting these top notch players across the country. Uh, and I'm lucky to have a bunch of them in my, my running back room right now, but, it's uh, it's all part of the journey. You know, it's all part of the story, and uh, you just got to be humble, man. You got to you got to stay grounded and uh, remember where you came from. You know, I came from these uh, these smaller places, and there was great coaches all along the way that could, you know, they could be in the same position I'm in. I'm just I was fortunate enough to have a couple people, you know, uh, you know, take a chance on me or give me an opportunity. And then when you get those opportunities, you got to make the most of them. So um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm happy to be here. And and uh, you know, I'm gonna keep working like I. Uh, like I did when I first got started, you know. Coach, my last question for you. It seems like everywhere you go, you always have some big time running backs and they put up big time numbers. Is that, that a coincidence that when you show up, they ball are uh, high, high? All that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, uh, a little bit of coincidence and a little bit of a uh, little bit of coaching, man. Maybe it's uh, we, we have a great offense. You know, our offensive scheme is. Uh, really puts the running backs in a good position and they're, they're going to run the ball and then they're going to catch the ball and do a lot of that. And we're kind of spread the field and do it in space, you know? So we, we get those one-on-one matchups and, you know, that's, that's a lot of what we focus on, you know, in, in our rooms is, is breaking down those tacklers, you know, making people miss and um, getting all the extra yards and those types of things. But, you know, my biggest, I think philosophy when, when it comes to coaching is, I mean, you love your guys and you respect your guys and, and you treat them like men. And, uh, you know, that, you know, they know that I have their back, you know, so I ask a lot out of them that they give me a lot back. And then, and then the success starts coming and and the performance on the field starts elevating. And, um, 
Yeah, so it's been it's a mutual relationship. You know, you, you get you get good players and you, and you coach them hard and um, you make sure you guys are all on the same page together. And then all of a sudden you start seeing all that stuff show up on uh, on game day. All right, coach, and this will be my last question as well. Y'all 38 days out from playing Louisiana Tech in Starkville in Mississippi, baby. So how does it feel just getting ready for the season right around the corner? And I know y'all getting ready to start up camp. So if you could, just tell me how it feels for you and what days are y'all reporting for camp? Yeah, we start Vegas. Come on down anytime. All right. Check this place out. It's a great, it's a great spot. Great college town. Great fans. Bunch of cowbells ringing. So I'm I'm excited like it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, first day of school or prom night, man, type of thing. And it's it's uh, report day on the 5th, August 5th, and then August 6th will be our first practice. Uh, but it's the first year, you know, getting over uh, the whole, you know, thing from last season with COVID and, and uh, a lot of the restrictions. We had a – we actually had a spring football this year, and we had a, we had a great summer of guys working out. And I'm um, excited to get them back uh, next week and then really, really, uh, really get after it this year, looking for making a big jump from year one to year two, so – um, every time this year, you know, you go on vacation, uh, you get a couple of weeks off there in, uh, you know, July and August and, uh, or, or I guess July, end of June and July. And then August starts rolling around and then, and you start getting that itch, man. So I'm fully in itch mode ready, and ready to rock and roll, man. Well, there it was, man. Y'all heard it. Coach Eric Mealy for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Maroon White, and they're going to fight all night. Hell State, baby, because they one of the top programs in the SEC and also the country. They got a great coaching staff. Y'all just heard, Coach, top-notch facilities, big-time coaching, big-time players. What more do you want, man, than to be a Bulldog or just represent for them in the stands? And I got to give another shout-out to Coach Eric for even coming on and showing us his love. A shout-out to his Copar, Melissa, for doing her job as well. And one thing y'all got to know, man, a coach is a very important part of every player life and every pro program that y'all see. It ain't just about the boosters or the fans. It's also the coaches as well, not just about the players. So they play a great part and they make a lot of sacrifice. So I want to thank you again, Coach, for coming on. And thank you for everything you do. And I'm going to leave y'all how I always leave y'all. Keep your head up and not down. I guess you will fall to the ground. This is the Life and Football Podcast. Catch you next time. You are now listening to the Life and Football Podcast. Check out the new website, lifeandfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeandfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Football. It's life and football. We are life and football.